Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis. Today is my last video on osteoarthritis. We'll talk about how to manage this degenerative joint disease. Next, we'll talk about rheumatoid arthritis. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. All right, let's dive into the management of degenerative joint disease. Let's get started. By the way, you can get a case every week, plus answer, plus explanation, sent directly to your email address. Just go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and follow me there. It's free. As you know, osteoarthritis is primary or secondary. Primary is idiopathic and secondary has many causes. Few of these are left at this price. Perfectionist Ultimate Notebook plus 20 lymphoma cases plus 25 bleeding cases. Patreon.com forward slash medicosis for less than 5 bucks. Hurry up, it's not gonna last forever. Treatment of osteoarthritis. We have maintenance of function and palliation of symptoms. Oh my goodness. Then the palliation of symptoms is either non-pharmacological or pharmacological. Okay, because doctors are not just paid by these big pharmaceutical corporations. Oh, right. We're not paid in money. We're paid in discount and other perks and stuff. Okay, fair enough. All right. That doesn't mean that we have, like, we don't have non-pharmacological therapies. We have a lot of these. But people who just want to yell will always yell. Your mechanic gets his auto parts at a discount from AutoZone. Does that mean that your mechanic is paid by big corporations and therefore he cannot fix your car? Okay, bring natural therapy to your car. My goodness. Maintenance of function. Ambulatory assisted devices. So canes and stuff like that to help the patient because malalignment will lead to osteo. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, that's a huge thing. In Egypt, I have never heard of occupational therapy, but in the United States, this is a big thing. Weight loss, of course, because obesity is a risk factor. Palliation of symptoms, non-pharmacological and pharmacological. Non-pharmacological, we have exercise, heat and ice, all right, especially when it hurts, when there's like something, it's like a flare or something. Show insoles to help with the weight bearing stuff so that it's not rough and it's nice and cozy. Let's talk about pharmacological therapy. We have topical and systemic topical, such as topical caspation, and this is kind of controversial. Topical non steroidals, we have the salicylic acid and diclofenac. Systemic non steroidals, big time. You can use non selective or you can use COX 2 inhibitors, which are good on your stomach. Acetaminophen, tramadol, diloxetine. Opiates, and this is last resort, okay, because many patients are now addicted to opioids. There are many reasons for that, but because many doctors are stupid and just want to make the patient happy. Your job as a doctor is not to make your patient happy. Your job is to make your patient healthy. But if I didn't prescribe opiate to my patient, he's not going to come to see me again. Wham! Call the ambulance. Then we discovered later that many patients took the opioid from their prescription, from their doctor, and then sold it on the street, called doctor shopping. But the patient came and told me that he had pain and I believed him. Oh, if you can't tell if the patient has pain or he's malingering, you shouldn't be a doctor. You should drive for Uber, just a background check and a driver's license, and we will see you on the road, brother. Okay, now let's get sophisticated. If you want to give the patient a non-selective, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, this is bad for stomach, you can add a proton pump inhibitor or use a COX-2 inhibitor. Cool. What if my patient had renal problems or heart problems? Use acetaminophen. Don't use those non-selective non-steroidals. What if the non-steroidals are not responding and the patient is not responding to acetaminophen and the patient doesn't want joint replacement surgery. Try tramadol. What the flip is duloxetine? It's a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, which is awesome. All right, how about opiate? You should try to avoid opiate in the elderly. Why? They increase morbidity in the elderly, especially they increase the risk of traumatic falls. So traumatic falls, so they like the elderly patient are more likely to fall and injure or broke their hip or something like that, which is horrible. By the way, if like grandpa injured his hip, his chances of dying are higher than that of myocardial infarction, believe it or not, at that age. 
steroids and osteoarthritis you can try low dose oral prednisone for six weeks but on your exam if you have two choices one of them is oral steroids the other is intraarticular and the patient has osteoarthritis please go with the intraarticular because this is where where the drama is the drama is in the joint it's a non-inflammatory problem there aren't o2 antibodies floating in the bloodstream so don't give steroids systemically give it intraarticularly no more than three to four times per year should you give intraarticular steroids. Don't be like those foolish, stupid, corrupt pain doctors who give this like every time the patient comes. All oh, right, you need an injection? Okay, here you go. Are you happy? Go away. Then you, they come next time. Then they come next time. That's very unethical. Because Hippocrates said the first rule is do no harm. Visco supplementation with intraarticular injection of hyaluronic acid. This is very, very expensive. However, patients who try this love it. And you don't get the side effects of the intraarticular steroid. By the way, what are the side effects of intraarticular steroid injection? Let me know in the comments. What's the ultimate treatment to your wearing tires? Replace them. What's the ultimate treatment to your wearing joints? Replace them, called arthroplasty or joint replacement. And here's something called conflict of interest. Surgeons are trained to operate. Don't ask a surgeon, do I need a surgery? Because if he is not honest, he'll tell you, of course, my son, you need a surgery. You'll be flying after the surgery and you will live happily ever after. It's called conflict of interest. I'm not saying all surgeons do that, but few of them do, and this is horrible. You should ask a medical doctor, like internal medicine stuff, all right, and a surgeon, and ask lots of people, lots of people. When you ask lots of people, if they all agree, all of these surgeons and doctors agree at something, probably this is true. Same thing I use with my car. I have no idea how to fix a car, so I go to a mechanic. But if I don't believe this mechanic and I want to make sure, I go to 10 mechanics. So I am having a problem with the engine. One guy said, like, sell the car. It's not going to happen. The second guy said, I need $8,000 for a new engine job. Okay, screw you guys. And then the, all, the rest of the eight told me, okay, it's a problem. We can, like, just replace this bearing and do this stuff. And the, your car will probably run for another year or so. And all of them agreed on this. Of course, I know that this is the truth. I'm not familiar with cars. I'm not an expert on cars. But when you ask many experts, just by the law of average, just by the random sample of the population of experts, you'll get the correct answer even though you're not an expert. So don't just ask one surgeon. This is not smart. Because if you are a hammer, to you, everything is a nail. If you love medical mnemonics and pictures, go to Picmonic. My friends at Picmonic are awesome. They will help you memorize the most difficult disease to memorize ever. The link is in the description. They are not a sponsor of this video. Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we'll talk about rheumatoid arthritis. So please subscribe and hit the bell. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram. Support this channel on Patreon. And for just a buck, you'll get extra osteoarthritis notes, extra aspirin notes, and extra rheumatoid arthritis notes for the same buck plus more than 20 other notes called post notes. So go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thank you guys for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense.